Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. I'm Lee from thecraftyspark.co.uk and today we are going to be making this. Ooh, if I just turn it over the side you can actually see what it is. You see that? It's a cantilever picnic box that opens like that. It's quite weird actually having it on its side while I'm trying to open it. But I'm trying to get it so you can see it in the front camera. Maybe I need a camera on my head, like one of these GoPro things. That would be a bit mad though, wouldn't it? But this is how it opens. So you've seen it from the side. This is it from the top. And then both of these open out. There you go. Whoops. And funnily enough, that one does the same thing. And then you also have the middle bit that opens out. Now, there's quite a few bits and pieces to do in this box. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to build the actual picnic box itself. And with any luck, I'll be able to show you how to decorate it all within the same video. But it may end up a little bit too long. So I'll see how we go. And if it is too long, then I'll do you a second video to show you how to get all the decoration going onto it as well. Okay, so let's move that um, out of the way. Let's pop it, Oops. pop it over there for a minute. Now, to begin with, there are quite a few bits of card that need to be cut. But what I'm going to do is just whiz through it now and then I'll actually put a whole list of what you need as far as your cutting sizes on my blog which is quite easy, it's www.thecraftyspark.co.uk Alright, so to begin with you will need eight strips of card, now these measure four inches by three quarters of an inch at the end of each one you will need to make a hole and that hole needs to be three eighths of an inch in and in the centre as well. I can hear my cat scratching the door. Can you believe this? I've said to the children, stay out of the way, I'm going to be filming, and the cat decides to join in instead. Billy! Billy! Stop it! Well, he's a lovely cat, but he's rather large, and if he's in here, he gets in the way, and I can't do anything. Um, so where was I? Oh, so easily distracted. Um, yes, that's right, so we need eight of these, and you're going to stick them together, one on top of the other, like that, and round off the ends. You don't have to round the ends off, I just think it looks a bit neater. And I do that with my corner punch, which again will be on my blog so that you'll know what one to get. You will also need two full length strips. Now I say full length, it can either be a full length of 12 by 12 cardstock, so in other words these would be 12 inches long, or it could actually be a strip from an A4 size. It doesn't really matter, it's just obviously depending on how long that is, is going to depend on how long you make your handle in the end. Two of those, one inch wide. And then for the actual box itself, you will need for the base one piece of card that measures 11 and a half by 8 and a quarter two pieces of card that measure 7 by 8 and a quarter so two of these and then for your lids you need one piece sorry two pieces because there's two lids yeah, that's right, two lids for each box. <laughs> so for your two lids, you're going to need one piece that measures five and five eighths by six and seven eighths. And your second piece, obviously, five and five eighths by six and seven eighths. I'm getting so much up my numbers because I'm looking at numbers and I've got bits in my hand as well. <sighs> two of these, these ones need to measure six and a quarter by six and seven eighths. So just so you've got that again. Six and a quarter by six and seven eighths, two of those. Five and five eighths by six and seven eighths, two of those. Whoops. Eight and a quarter by seven, two of those. Eleven and a half by eight and a quarter, one of those. 
four by three quarters of an inch, eight of those, and then finally a strip of either 12 inches or 11 and a half inches or 11 inches, however long your standard length of paper is, but that long by an inch wide. Okay, so that's all our pieces that we need to have cut. Now I was getting in a muddle there because I've actually put some of it together already to try and save a bit of time for you, otherwise we could be here all night just trying to make boxes. Now, bringing in my Simply Scoreboard. Oh, somebody asked me the other day, actually, just while I remember, somebody said to me, why have you got lines on your Simply Scoreboard? Well, it's something that I've always done on all my scoreboards that I've ever had. I've always put lines on the board, really just so that it makes it easier if I ever have to move things over or um, if I have to sort of try and find an odd number where I'm actually working things out. So what I do is on all my boards I always draw lines at 3 inches, 6 inches, 9 inches and 12 inches. That way I always know if I've got a bit of card and I've scored a line and I need to move it just along just enough, I always know where my centre line is because I can see it at the top and the bottom and it just makes things a bit easier when you're trying to work along the bottom as well because I tend to sort of work a bit upside down sometimes. So little tip there, but if you are going to do it be very very careful because you have to do it in some sort of um, permanent marker or in this case I actually used one of those um, paint marker things, one of these, one of these pilot pens. Now when it's been obviously permanent it is permanent so if you do it in the wrong place it can be very very hard to take off. Non-acetone nail varnish remover though is very good because it won't actually melt your plastic board but it does tend to take the paint off but obviously if you leave it on there too long it could damage things and if you damage anything I didn't tell you to use it. I will deny all knowledge forever and ever. Right let's get back to our picnic box. So for the base of our box Having your cardstock with your longest edge at the top, you need to be scoring at three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, two and a half inches, nine inches, ten inches, and ten and three quarters of an inch. Turn it round so that you've got your short end at the top. Score at one and a half and six and three quarters. Now fortunately I wasn't actually marking my card when I was doing that, I've already done it because otherwise that would have been the squiggliest line ever wouldn't it? Okay so we've got one and a half and six and three quarters. Let's just pop that over to the side for a second. Now then grab your scissors and this is where we're going to start cutting. So I always tend to cut on the back because I find that I can actually see the score lines a little bit easier but it doesn't really matter I suppose with either side you cut on whatever takes your preference but we need to be cutting straight up on all these ones that are on the long side And again on the other side. Whoops, right the way through. Winding your fingers underneath the paper, otherwise, you may find that you're actually cutting your fingers rather than just the paper. Right, on the short ends, cut your end, but just notch it in very very slightly, not a huge amount, you don't want to go too far but just slightly because this end bit here is actually going to fold inwards to add a bit of strength to the box as we're making it. So just slightly, notch off your ends there, both of the ends, get round and move those out of the way. Now these larger flaps you want to cut off probably about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. Not really too much more than that, otherwise you won't have anything left to glue on. So go for about a quarter of an inch. Now ordinarily, 
when I'm making boxes, I would always say to cut and notch each section. So along this edge here, rather than being completely straight, you'll actually have it notched in, see like that one is. But this time you don't want to do that because if you do, you're not going to be able to get that sort of curving shape going at the bottom of your box because you won't have anything left to line it up with. Grab your bone folder, burnish all those edges, all those folds, and make sure they're nicely folded. Now, when you're making boxes as well, anything that you want maybe a little bit sturdier than usual so not necessarily on a card unless you need a very strong card but certainly with a box always use wet glue because the wet glues that we use nowadays near enough all of them have got acrylic fiber in somewhere or other and those acrylic fibers help to make the glue incredibly strong and because it becomes so strong the fibers actually mesh together with the fibres of the card and you end up with a, a really strong, strong box when it's dried. So although you can use double-sided tape, I would always say use wet glue. I always find it better. Now, whoops, missed one there. I'll just fold that on over as well. Now then, when you're actually putting these edges together, we're going to be using this top bit to line up against this top bit here all right so it's going to be short flap in first and then the longer flap so you're going to be like that your longer flap will be underneath and it's going to go inwards and as it goes in you could actually don't worry about what this one's doing just ignore that but you could actually go right over or right back if you look if I show you from the other side as well oh I hope that, that did that go too dark? It has a bit, hasn't it? Let me go upside down and show you this way. There you go, so you can see in the light. But when you fold it round, you want to make sure that the edges, more fingers and thumbs, look, the edge here is very much along this edge. All right, so if you straighten it out completely, making it entirely straight, then your measurements and your matching will be exactly right. If you go too far over, so that it's at an angle, you see that? Um, let me see how far I can get up without going out of focus. There you go. If it's too far that way, that's no good. If it's too far that way, that's no good. You need to make it dead on. Now there is going to be a little bit poking out the top there. Don't worry about that. We'll snip that off in the end. At the end. But to put your glue on, you need a small line down there and a nice dollop on there. And then, as I said, we just fold it over. Whoops, fold that one in. Make sure you've got it perfectly square or as square as you can get. Straight, square, I'm not sure if square is the right word actually. Straight's probably the better word, isn't it? And then just pinch it down. Now, Tombow glue, the fabulous Tombow glue, is so super strong. Oops, done that around the wrong way. That was a good start, wasn't it? Look, see, it's so strong, once you've stuck it, it's very difficult to get it undone again. Ooh, quickly, quickly. There we go. It's because I'm talking and I just heard the doorbell go. Why is it every time I start filming, somebody rings the doorbell? Right, let's try that again, shall we? There we go. So we'll put it on, we will make it nice and straight, stick it down, there you go. Now thankfully I did that fast enough that it's not actually damaged my card, otherwise we'd be starting the film all over again. Which wouldn't be the first time, I can assure you. Okay, let's do the other sides. So we go along the edge, dollop on the end. Fold it round, line it up nice and straight. Now you, because it's wet glue, you do have a few seconds of wiggle room, but that that's 
really all it is is a few seconds it's not really any more than that so try and if you can be as precise as possible as quickly as possible if if you're a bit uncertain or a bit wary of using a glue that does bind so quickly you could always just use something like um, just a standard PVA glue rather than one of the, the more specialist craft glues because they tend to take a bit longer to dry. The only thing you will find though if you're using one of those is you'll actually be sitting there holding it for a while while you're waiting for it to dry because they do take a bit longer but you do get a bit more time on your side. Is that one straight? Yep, yeah, that one's straight. Can you see these little bits hanging out the top now? We'll nip those off in a minute. Okay, Oop. and for our last one, a little bit up there, a nice dollop on there. Fold that around there, put that on there. And stick that bit down. There we go. Wipe your glue off. Right, so now we've stuck all our corners and flaps down. I've trimmed off all the little notchy bits that were sticking out. The next thing we need to be doing is actually gluing these flaps inside the box. So we just plop some glue on there and some more on that side. Oops. Ugh. Got it on my fingers, as usual. Fold it over, stick it down. Oh, goodness me, I'm getting in a mess. Stick that side down. There we go. Right. So that is our bottom finished for the base of our picnic basket. Next thing we need to be doing is actually making the lid that goes on the top of this one which will flap over like that. Now here's one I did earlier. <laughs> it's like Blue Peter isn't it? <laughs> this is one I did earlier and it's going to sit on the top just like that. Okay and then the edge will fold round. But I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a minute. Okay let's move that out of the way. Grab our scoreboard. Now you need to get your piece or pieces of cardstock that measure, uh, what do they measure? They measure six and seven eighths by five and five eighths. Okay, pop it on the board and then we need to score at one and one and three quarters. Turn it round, score it three quarters and six and an eighth. Okay, move that back out of the way. Right, so on here then. Again, fold on all the score lines and burnish them. What we're going to have here is, if I show you so that it makes a bit more sense, the actual box lid sits on the box and it curves around the bottom there. Can you see that? It goes around the bottom which helps to strengthen the side part. Okay. So when we're cutting I'm going to end up with bits and pieces everywhere in a minute. Slightly notch in again on this edge, just like we did just now. But just a smidge, not a big bit, just a little bit. And then on our lid, on the edge, a small notch on this edge. But we actually want quite a big notch on this one so the end that's closest whoopsie daisy dear 
the end that's closest to our one inch gap that we've got at the end here you want to put quite a big notch on there you'll see why in just a sec but go across so nice straight edge there a very small one there move those out of the way now I'm just going to get my big scissors in what we're actually going to be doing now is we're going to cut at an angle now you could if you wanted to you could actually um, draw this measure it do it with a ruler whatever you like I'm quite happy just doing it this way but if you wanted to be very precise and very specific then I'd suggest draw your line because you'll probably find it a bit more helpful there we go so again using glue nice wet glue love the wet glue oh love getting it on the table love getting it on myself do you remember I don't know if you ever did this at school me I'm sure there's probably quite a few people that remember doing it I know a lot of me my friends actually did it but at school we had copy decks now they don't use copy decks anymore they use like print sticks and we used to get the copy decks and paint it all over our hands and then sit there peeling it off <laughs> great fun my mother used to go mental though because I'd end up with it all over myself all over my clothes she was a bit of a fussy what's it my mother got to stay clean children weren't allowed to be dirty anyway that's enough about her that's our lid then there we go did you see how far was that round I hope I did that in the camera because I was sort of gabbling at the same time but fold the larger flap backwards now we're just going to put some glue just on this large flap all right we don't want it going on the inside because then it will go everywhere pop it on now if you fit it on your box so it's actually whoops actually on the box itself make it nice and central it is slightly wider than the box base it's designed like that to make sure there's enough room for any layers that go in there and also to allow movement on the lid but put it into place then just fold over all right so once you've folded it over just give it a rub with your finger you don't need to go too nuts with it but once you've got it fairly stuck then you can open up hold the box just at an angle it will find its own way and then just press down from there all right now this is the other one that I did earlier when I was doing my blue Peter bit and before I started sticking glue all over my hands so slide it in there make sure you've got it nice and straight Oops, she says noticing it's wonky there we go nice and straight hold it secure and fold it over and then just stick it down give it a rub to make sure it's nice and stuck and then you will have oops your box with as I thought a wonky lid how did I manage that <laughs> never mind this is a really good thing actually about this box you see how I've done that that's obviously where I haven't cut straight along here I've cut this piece I know this piece is straight but I obviously haven't done this one straight but what we're actually going to be doing is covering that up anyway so it's very forgiving this box you may not think it as you're actually building it but we're going to be getting some punch flowers and they will cover that gap so even if you have gone a bit wonky like I did no one's actually going to see it by the time you're finished because da -da, it's all covered up nicely right let's move that back out of the way again now I've already 
done my panel that's going on top of here again the measurements for these are all going to be on my blog as well but this pattern when I showed it to my friend she was quite amazed but it's actually done with the sprinkles of life step step set not set set I've used the sprinkles in crumb cake there and then this tiny diddy little flower which is there it is up there in Blushing Bride, which is the same colour cardstock as what I've used to actually make the box itself. So, there's another one. See that? Not everybody stamps perfectly, but best bit about stamping up cardstock, it's such good quality. If you do do it wrong one side, you flip it over, you do it fine the other side, you can't actually see it so you don't end up wasting too much because sometimes you waste it and it all gets up ends up thrown away doesn't it there right that's that part on now here's my nice wonky edge super duper to put your flowers on close your box make sure your box is together all right Stick that around there a bit more, that's it. Put a nice line of glue down the edge. You could actually put the flowers on beforehand if you wanted to, if you were a bit nervous about it. But then just lay your flowers just along that edge. Like that. There we go. You could even do a little bit of a squiggly line, which is what I did when I did the other box. All right, now if you just tap it down just gently, you don't want to hit it too hard because you'll push the box lid in, but tap them down gently and then you'll find that when you open them, they will be held firmly enough that you can then do it properly and stick them with your fingers better. So we've got it all stuck on that edge now. So now when you open the box, you've got both sides opening nicely. If it catches like it did just then, it's this edge just here. You just need to pop a little bit more glue or tape or whatever it is you've used on the edge there and it will hold it in. Okay. So that is our box base done, or our pis, pi, pis, 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 pisnic, picnic base is done. And the only other thing left to do is to make the holes to actually put the strap on, which is going to hold the top box on. But because I want this to dry out a little bit first, I'm going to show you that and where they go in a minute. Okay, 